trigonelline, which is otherwise known as 1-methylnicotinic acid or methylated niacin, increases NAD, and these data will be in mice. So first, we're going to take a look at NAD levels in whole blood, and then there are three groups. Controls, and then NAD levels in whole blood two hours after the mice were force-fed with trigonelline, and then NAD levels the next day after that trigonelline force feed. So first, we can see that whole blood NAD levels were increased two hours after the trigonelline force feed, but not the next day. Now, a common criticism about blood NAD level measurements or blood intracellular NAD level measurements is what's happening in tissues. For example, what happens in blood may not be representative of changes inside of tissues like liver or muscle. So they evaluated that in this study. And first, taking a look at liver levels of NAD, again, two hours or overnight after the trigonelline force feed. So first, we can see that liver levels of NAD were significantly increased two hours later, but were not significantly increased the next day. What about in muscle? And that's what we'll see here. They looked at the gastrocnemius, which is the lower calf, lower calf muscle. So here, two hours after the trigonelline force feed, NAD levels were not significantly increased, but they were significantly increased the next day. So from these data, we can see that at least in mice, trigonelline uh, increases NAD both in whole blood and inside tissues, including the liver and muscle. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, then you know I've been trying to increase NAD by increasing dietary intake of tri trigonelline-rich foods. Now, another part of that equation is if trigonelline intake is high, will plasma trigonelline also be high? And that's potentially important because in the mouse study on the left, after the trigonelline force feed, plasma levels of trigonelline increased in conjunction with the increases for NAD in each, in each area, whole blood, liver, and muscle. So if I increase dietary trigonelline but don't see a change in plasma levels of trigonelline, how can I expect at least blood levels of trigonelline uh, of NAD to increase? So then there's a second question. Is plasma trigonelline significantly correlated with NAD? And I have eight tests for both blood intracellular levels of NAD and plasma levels of trigonelline. So first, the plasma levels of trigonelline are generated by uh, an at-home metabolomics kit using IOLO's kit. And if you want to track this yourself or its other 600 other metabolites, discount link in the video's description. So what we'll see is that plasma levels of trigonelline can indeed be increased by diet. So on the y-axis, we've got plasma levels of trigonelline, again, tracked by IOLO's kit. So for the first five tests, and this is from 2023 into 2024 data, I, wasn't, I didn't have anything special in my diet in terms of trigonelline-rich foods. It was just eating my normal diet. And over those five tests, my average plasma trigonelline level was 0.29 micromolar, which is relatively low. And then after I saw the trigonelline story, I think it was on a modern health span that I was first made aware of trigonelline increasing. The preliminary data, it, was, it wasn't published yet. Uh, Dr. Vince, Vincent, Vincenzo Sorrentino was on modern health span talking about trigonelline. And then I saw the data in preprint and then in, uh, or maybe it wasn't in preprint, but it was finally published uh, earlier this year. So once I saw that uh, trigonelline could increase NAD, I started to add trigonelline-rich foods into the approach, starting with fenugreek seeds. And we can see that that pushed plasma levels of trigonelline closer to one micromolar, so about a 3x increase for plasma trigonelline. But then there are other foods that may be more rich in trigonelline. And for the test after that, I included foods like chickpeas and alfalfa sprouts, which have been reported to have trigonelline. There too, I saw an increase for plasma trigonelline, now pushing it closer to two micromolar, about seven X higher than my baseline. But the biggest jump, you can see that there's a green dot in the right corner, that's with clover sprouts. And clover seeds have been reported to have the highest content of trigonelline relative to other foods, including coffee. So more specifically, it incre increased plasma trigonelline to 6.9 micromolar, which is a 24 X increase above my baseline. So from this, we can see that plasma trigonelline can indeed be increased by diet. But what about the correlation or, or the correlation for plasma trigonelline with plasma levels or blood intracellular levels of NAD? And here too, as I mentioned earlier, I have eight tests, which is what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got blood intracellular levels of NAD, and these data are generated by Ginfinity. If you want to measure your own blood intracellular levels of NAD, discount link in the video's description. So when looking at these data, 
plasma trignelling on the uh, x-axis, we can see that there is not a significant correlation between plasma trigonelline with NAD, as the p-value is far greater than 0.05 at 0.49. So no, no significant correlation for plasma trigonelline with NAD. Now, it looks like there are a couple of outliers on this plot. The one at the far right at 7 micromolar is clover sprouts induced. So that's not likely an outlier. But for this uh, data point here, that was 600 milligrams of nicotinic acid per day, which increased NAD. But you, you, you can see that trigonelline levels were relatively low, so it's not a trigonelline increasing NAD story. So even if we take out uh, that, that data point as a potential outlier, which it's not, again, because nicotinic acid induced it, the data looks pretty much flat for the correlation for plasma trigonelline with NAD, at least within the 0 to 2 micromolar range. So what we can see from both of these plots is that diet can indeed, indeed increase plasma levels of trigonelline, but not high enough to impact NAD, at least for me, over eight tests. But there may be good news to this story, and I thought the trigonelline story was over, but trigonelline is now available by supplement. And I started that experiment. I'm going to do a 10-day experiment with one gram of trigonelline per day. That's a 10x further increase above my highest dietary intake of trigonelline, which I achieved with clover sprouts, about 100 milligrams per day. So supplementing with a gram a day, so 500 milligrams twice a day, to, uh, separated uh, er, you know, early, early in the morning and later in the day. So we'll see if one gram makes a dent. Now, I haven't decided if I'll go higher. I think the human equivalent dose that they used in the mouse study was about 1.6 grams of trigonelline per day. So I may go as high as that. But I'm going to wait to see what the results show for blood uh, intracellular levels of NAD. And I'm planning on sending metabolomic data out on that day too, so next Friday. So we'll see if one gram of trigonelline supplemental is able to increase plasma levels of uh, oh, plasma levels of trigonelline, but then also blood intracellular levels of NAD. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, but also GrimAge, diet tracking or green tea, diet tracking with Chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Tracking brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.